Hey everyone, it's James. And buongiorno, it's Stephanie. And we are coming to you today. Maybe you can't tell because of the because uh, the smog, but we're here in Rome. Yeah, we're on vacation in Italy. And uh, I have news for everyone. And you might have thought I was the big RV nerd, but it turns out that Steph is the <laughs> biggest RV nerd I have ever encountered. Because when I said we're going to Italy, Steph said, Let's go check out some RVs. I've always wanted to see the Italian RVs. We see them on the Tour de France, and now we get to see the insides of those RVs. So, wish us luck, because there's a bit of a language barrier here. Neither of us speak a word of Italian. Um, Ciao. Gonna... Buongiorno. <laughs> that, that's, that's the extent it. of it. <laughs> Anyway, um, we're going to go try to check some out, so wish us luck. Here we go. Come along. Bye. And so we wound up at Centro Caravan Costantini on the outskirts of Rome. Yeah, we took a taxi there. Everybody was so friendly to us there. I know. I thought when we were done they were going to invite us to dinner, but it <laughs> turns out that didn't happen. Darn it. So we looked at a lot of RVs, and what I thought I'd like to do, since I don't really need to review one, is I'm going to show you European features for American RVers. And we'll start off with Lorenzo. Uh, the firm that we have here are Rimor. Mobile Vetta and CE Caravan International. These are these are Italian brand. Okay. Also, we have a Challenger, that is a French brand. Ah. Okay. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about is the size. Look at this. Just acres and acres of small RVs. Yeah, they're all small, like Class B and B pluses in the U.S. Yeah, or maybe a small C, and that's great for us because we like to get in, get out. We don't have a tow vehicle. We're totally down with the small RVs. And they're all diesel. Yeah. Old, and they all yeah. get pretty good mileage. Oh, now look. Even their Class A's are super small. They're under 7 meters long. And in that 7 meters, most of them manage to pack in a garage. That's because the RV market in Europe is younger than here in the U.S., don't you think? Uh, I don't care why it is. I just like it. We would have <laughs> no trouble fitting bikes in the back there. This yeah. one, I can fit you in. Like, ah. when, when you annoy me, there you go. That's, <laughs> really? That's, really? Your, that's your space. <laughs> Um, and they're actually set up for use as garage. You see the like the rubberized flooring or the, yeah. the diamond plate. Yeah, you can roll a scooter right in there. This one you could actually even fit. Well, besides the three of us, yeah. an actual motorcycle into huge. And I wish they'd do it in the U.S. But the garage makes the bed really high. But they've thought of that. See, check it out. They've got a raising bed so that when you've got a motorcycle in there or something, you can raise the bed up. But when you take it out and park it, you can lower it down. Yeah, that's so clever. Yeah, and because I don't think a, a high bed would really work here in the U.S. Oh, here's another take on the on the same kind of thing. They've actually got bunk beds in the garage area, but if you don't need it, you pull the bunk bed out and remove it. Oh, so neat. True. And then the next thing I want to talk about is style. These RVs looked fantastic. You surely had to expect that the Italians would have some sense of style. Well, they didn't disappoint. I mean, look at this. <laughs> no. All sorts of different uh, materials in the surfaces, curved cabinetry, swanky sinks. Yeah, we didn't see a single plastic sink. Yeah, we must have been in 15 RVs. Yeah. I didn't see, I hardly saw any plastic at all, to be completely honest. Look yeah. at the floor. It looks marine. It looks like something you'd see in a yacht. There's one of those elevated beds we were talking about. And this is actually, I can tell by the straight cabinet doors, that was a lower end RV. Now look at that sink. So interesting. Yeah. Oh, and look at this. Where have we seen this before? The slick sliding table. Yeah, look at how it folds over. Gives you room. I love it. Yeah, there's only, as I know, one North American RV manufacturer that has a table that does something like this. And I wish there were more. Mm -hmm. Like I said, folding it in half when you need it out of the way, like when you're underway, that's a fantastic idea. Yeah, it's still not a perfect system, though. No, the, the, you can't remove it completely. Yeah. But it's in almost all of their, well, not almost all, but it's in a good half of them. This is a, another unit. We saw it in at least three or four different units they had there. Hmm. Okay, and the next thing I want to talk about is ovens and fridges. That's yeah. an oven. Yeah, one major difference was that they didn't have any microwaves in their RVs. And that's because I guess they were only allowed one kilowatt at campgrounds or something like that. Hmm. Oh, look at that huge fridge. Well, there's a reason they have huge fridges, and I think Lorenzo said it best, so we're going to let him take it away. Yeah. But we have also all the same uh, concept of the other one. Right. From the Italian. The big big fridge. fridge. We're such a small In Italy, if you don't have big fries, <laughs> it's impossible to sell it. <laughs> Okay, tambour doors. What's that? It's like those uh, slidey doors that are in sections like on a roll-top desk. Mm, so what's so special about that? Um, well, I don't see them here in the U.S. much, but I saw them in a lot of the RVs over there. And what mm. it does, why I think it's important, 
is it opens up a lot more design possibilities. You can have a curved door and you don't have to leave room for that whole door to swing open. Or in the case of a pocket door, you'd have to leave room for yeah. that whole door to fit into a wall. Might or, be a lot lighter, too, of a material, I, I don't you know. think. Maybe. I don't know. But mm. I, it just opens up a lot more possibilities. Oh, yeah. look. Move over here. <laughs> it opens up a lot more possibilities that I that I just don't see over here. Like that that cabinet door would have hit you in the head if you tried to open because it it's because it's very tall and there's probably not okay. room for it. Interesting. Um, soft close hardware. Oh yeah, that's always a nice feature. Yeah, this, you see this in a lot of high end homes. Yeah. There we saw it in RVs. There's a mm-hmm. you know full extension glides. Yeah, we got your full extension glides. We got soft close full extension glides. Huh? Yeah, huh? very huh? nice. And there's that two-toned cabinetry again. We like that. Yeah, it's a multi, two different kinds of surfaces there. Mm -hmm. Um, Now this next one, drop-down beds. I didn't film it specifically, so it's bits of other other clips, but they're ubiquitous. Every RV over there just about had this drop-down bed. Well, and again, I think that's because it's families who are RVing, so there's a market for that second bed in these small RVs. Yeah, and if you've seen our other video on the Winnebago trend, then you'll know this is something that's just now starting to make it here. But over there, every RV has got one. And there's one of them that's pretty interesting that Lorenzo is going to tell us about here in just a second that actually stops halfway And then the pos- uh, possibility to stop at the first position that gives you the possibility to stay, at the tab- to stay at the table with the bed in this position and the people that, uh, the child, for example, that sleep inside. Okay, now here's one, bottle storage. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, I saw it in several of the RVs over there. Um, they've got like a little compartment in the floor. It's like a, like a hatch like you'd see in a boat. And what's in it is kind of like a, like a cooler almost. Right, like, right. You, insulated, right? Yeah, it was, they were insulated yeah. and they were meant to store bottles. And you could put, he was telling us like a, a kind of a permanent ice in there sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Good use of space. And I found some other bottle storage under the kitchen sink in one of the RVs, yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Lorenzo is going to give us a scoop on exactly what's, uh, what that the was box, about. and there's some circles down there. For s- soda or something? Storage, maybe? Oh, bottle. Wine bottle. Oh, wine! Wine! <laughs> wine storage. Well, of course! Yeah. We're in Italy! <laughs> <laughs> waste bins they get their own topic oh jeez well, just because you're not the one that takes out the trash doesn't mean it's not important <laughs> but they were in a lot of the doors of these RVs that the, we were looking they at they did it's a good place to keep them out of the way you can probably still throw stuff in them while you're driving and it's built in storage I don't see that enough I don't think in RVs here in North America hmm yeah tank clean out okay what's this and why do I care okay you don't care because <laughs> you don't deal with it but that's the fresh water tank and it has a clean out basically a hole that you can open up to get inside mm-hmm. the front. So if we had had this at one time when I dropped something down the fill nozzle, uh, I wouldn't have had to take the entire RV apart mm. to get to get the hose out of the fresh water tank. Okay. So it's a, it's good for cleaning. You can you can sanitize your fresh water tank easy if you can get in there and scrub it. It's just a good idea and I, I don't really see it much on RVs here. Mm. Wood shower floors. Okay, now this was cool. I like the look of these. Yeah, and it just feels neat. It mm-hmm. keeps the shower floor from flexing, and you're not actually standing on the cold plastic on the shower floor. Yeah. And and like Steph said, it just looks dang neat. I don't know that I've ever seen that in the U.S. Have you? Uh, um, in perhaps. spas. Well, <laughs> I'm in RV, so, yeah. <laughs> Cassette toilets. Now, this one is a feature that they all had that I'm not so sure I'm crazy about. Yeah, I think about. U.S. has a one-up on, on yeah. Europe and this so, department. So, cassette toilet. Um, basically, it's a it's a very small black tank, and uh, it's it's easy to dump, and, and we'll see why here in just a second. But he, it seems like he had to mess with it a lot in order to get it out. And there's your black tank, folks. That's it. That's it. All, <laughs> all four gallons of it or whatever. <laughs> So you're going to be dumping a lot. Yeah. And I'm not so sure I'm I'm crazy about that. And like I said, it did seem a little dicey to to get it back in and get it working again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd prefer the way we do it here on this one, I think. Oh, open dumping. Since they have the cassette toilet... They don't have anything really nasty that they have right, to dump. Right, just the gray tank. Yeah, so they just dump right out of the middle of the vehicle. You're about to hear Lorenzo explain sort of the uh, the RV dump procedure in Europe. Use it water, clock. Does it drain onto the ground or? No, normally in Europe you have a place. We have a place 
after I can show you uh -huh. where is uh, an open uh, space on okay. structure when you open and they go down uh, okay. on, on the floor. Okay, so you drive uh, over You need that. only to know where it is. <laughs> Because every vehicle have a different position, this one. Okay. Uh, so here is in the middle of the vehicle. Okay. When you drive, you remember to stop with this situation. <laughs> right there. Fuck, the water goes down. 100 liters. Well, and just like about any RV trip, this one ended with talking about the dump. <laughs> <laughs> so after we toured the RVs, we walked around their shop and got to see all the interesting accessories that they sell. Yeah, and I almost, I was this close to ordering one of those sliding table mechanisms to take home with yes, us. Yes, you I, were. You resisted. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Anyway, um, after that, it was a quick wrap up in the office and that'll do it. Yeah. Okay, and that's about going to do it for us here at Centro Caravan Costantini. Highly recommend the place. If you come here to Italy, they have a huge rental fleet as well as some very nice units we saw for sale. I'm here with Vittorio. He is the owner, I suppose. Yes. Thank you for visiting us. All right. And uh, we're going to call that a wrap. Thanks. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye-bye.